Hi everyone. My name is Lady Lauren X4. Welcome or welcome back to my book channel. Today we're doing our new video for Experiments in Terror by Karina Holly and it's Red Fox. This is the second in the series. I'm ready for my scares and I'm ready for Perry and Dex to give me a little hint and tension of romance in there and finally more about the crazy clown lady. But we're following them in New Mexico, I think. And there is a Navajo couple who is being terrorized by this entity and Perry and Dex are coming to figure out what's going on on and I am just so ready to read this. I I'm ready. So ready. So let's just jump into it. So like I said, we're following Perry and Dex. They are amateur ghost hunters who have a new web series. Um they've only met from the previous book which is Dark House. And they're going to Red Fox, New Mexico to help a Navajo couple because they're getting terrorized by an entity in their house. And this entity shapeshifts. It leaves dead carcasses around their house. It has animals go in their house. It likes to pound, like it's there are like animals on the roof. There's a lot of things going on. And in the story, we find out that, that something from Dex's past comes back in this book and starts to work against them. The ghosts start to work against them, and even their own show works against them. And they're just trying to trust each other because a lot has happened for them to just be like thrust into this again in such a short amount of time. Because I, I'm hoping, I'm thinking that this is going to be like a couple of weeks after they sign the contract for starting their web series. Because like that's just, that's weeks after they literally were almost killed by Roddy, the light lighthouse man. So also that's, and then we have like the unresolved tension of, Perry and Dex because you can kind of see that they have a like for each other but Dex is in a relationship with a model who is a bombshell and then Perry is well she thinks she is very unattractive because she's not flat um she's not model like she has curves and she's been used to being called ugly and fat most of her life and, or being compared to her very attractive sister to all other people. So um, it's a lot going on and I'm just ready for the feels, the terror and romance or at least the like the hints of it that I'm getting. I don't want Dex to cheat on his significant other. I keep forgetting her name because she's not important. Um, but I do want them to have a, I do want to see the tension and I do want to see him starting to realize that he likes Perry. Because we all know from like the first book that the clown lady says that they both meet each other. So what do they meet each other for? What is like the clown, because the clown lady said that like Dex has to tell Perry some stuff. But Dex hasn't told her anything yet. And the clown lady told Dex that, like, Perry is the one who's going to help him throughout this whole entire thing. So, like, I mean, if you're going to, like, thrust me through this whole entire stuff, then I think you should just tell me what's going on. Because, like, there's a lot. Which that clown lady, like, she's so scary. Like, out of all the things that, the, that this, this, this story is, this... Like the first one I thought was gonna be scary, but like she's scary. Scary. But um, let's get into reading. <laughs> okay, so I made it to the second chapter 
and I like her parents, Perry's parents are just not giving it to me. I'm trying to figure out why they're all like really combative when she talks about ghosts, spirits, supernatural. Because if you remember in the first book in Dark House, um, she had went to a therapist because she was talking to people who weren't there. Now I'm getting to see that maybe they were there, like everyone else just couldn't see them because she has like supernatural paranormal abilities. I don't know, but her parents are like really combative when it comes to the paranormal or supernatural. When they were like, yeah, well, great show, but um, stick to your career, hobby. We're going to go watch Desperate Housewives. I'm just like, Desperate Housewives? Okay. All right. And then her mom, while her show is going on, her mom is like picking her nails. My parents, even though they they don't like the supernatural like that, they would be so much more supportive than her parents are, especially her mother. Like, no, that is no, no, <laughs> no. Oh my gosh. So I don't know. I don't know. I like the dream thing she's having with like, the animals, the wolves who are like standing up on their hind legs, tearing her apart. That's scary. I'm waiting for the woman, the clown lady to come back and tell us what's going on. Like maybe she's like a mentor, you know, she's just like there in the background. Whenever like you hit a, a bad point in like a case, she just comes in and tries to like help you out, you know, but whatever whatever <laughs> oh I will say I will say I did get some new books and I wanted to kick everything off right because you know I well you probably don't know um if you haven't watched all my other videos if you don't know I got this from Barnes and Noble which is the grandmaster of demonic culture cultivation whatnot so then I realized the author of this has other series so I was like you know what let's see what this bad boy is about the other series are they a killian or not because if they're a killian I might be just might as well just get them because why not and like this one is like almost 400 pages so I like that so then I went on Amazon and I found them way cheaper than um, Barnes and Noble. So, so then I got Scum Villains Self Saving System. I just know it's a Killian. <laughs> I don't. I know that like I think like a demon who is a villain gets reincarnated, and he has to protect this guy don't that's so like basically like the gist of what i got then i got this which i've seen on like book depository and stuff like that but i just you know i was like no now i'm like yes so i'm like do i like this do i not i think i do so i got them i got all three and i'm I'm very happy because all three came out relatively, like, within the same amount of days. And they each all have a volume two coming out within the next couple of months. So I'm, I'm happy. All volume ones. <laughs> I mean, he's doing it right. He's doing it right. But also... Since we are doing a series for these books, I got them all. I'm only missing, so this is, this is three, which is Dead Sky Morning. And then this is four, which is Lying Season. 
And then this is six, which is Into the Hollow, because I have five coming in from Thrift Books. So I am ready for our series. Yay! I am super excited because I got them. So in the surf book one is on its way. It should be here within like the next next week. So I'm hoping to finish this one um Red Fox probably tomorrow or on Thursday. So we shall see. But for right now I'm on chapter two now. But again, her parents, not my jam. Not my jam. <laughs> All right. So last night I made it to chapter five. I ended on chapter five. And a lot of things have happened. So again if you don't want any spoilers this is not the video sorry guys but this is gonna be the vlog of like my experience reading it but um <laughs> that zombie coyote car thing crazy like what what was that what was that then um the I'm trying to figure out if, like, the paranormal entities are messing with Dex's medication. Because, like, when he was trying to figure out what happened to his medication, like, he misplaced it. Like, did he really misplace it? Because he had it, right? Like, he, he didn't leave without the medication. Right? Because I don't leave without my medication. So he has to have misplaced it or something had to have misplaced it for him, right? Like, I am I, like, thinking too much, like, in depth into this? Because, like, this is a lot. Then I think Perry is saying the wrong things. Especially when she was in the car talking about, you're not going to kill me. Or I didn't make you get on that medication, you're not crazy without your medication. Like, that's not what you say to a person. What? And I also think something's really going on with Dex because, besides the medication thing, because he's, like, doing a lot of, like, weird things that I think has to do with um, the, uh, what is his name? The guy they're meeting at the at the bar. I forgot his name already too. I forgot his name, but the the redhead median guy. Um, that he says is not his friend, but is his friend, but is not his friend. Like I don't understand what's going on, and I'm getting tired of like Dex giving me like these like really weird and cold answers because like he's coming off as like being a dick, like a very huge one too. And then him and Perry having to fake be married to order to get into this house with his poltergeist. Like, what's going on? I'm still tripping that they don't talk about the zombie coyote thing in this car. Like, they just zoom past this, like, coyote thing in this car. And you don't talk about it? Like, you knock on her door. Hey, checking up on you, and it's like really shady hotel, not even hotel, a motel. And then you don't talk about it, or we like blast past it. I'm not, we're not doing that. I'm having a whole full blown conversation about this stuff because we're not, we're not talking. It's a zombie coyote. What? But. To each his own, because uh, if I was in this, if I was in Perry's shoes, we would not, we, me and Dex would have had a full blown conversation about a lot of stuff because she's just like letting things blow over. She's not very confrontational, but mm, mm. I'm also thinking like she's having a, like her six cents are coming together. So maybe everything's getting 
like she's coming into her own spiritually or supernaturally maybe and maybe um Karina is basing these characters off of Warren and Lorraine um from Antiville Horror or um The Conjuring so maybe she's getting into her own, but I don't know. But I'm going to continue reading because this is really interesting. Um, we haven't, like you said, they're like, at chapter five, I think they're just making it to the couple's house. Oh, and and the wife is very religious, but she's blind. So like, I can understand them wanting someone to help them with a poltergeist when your wife is like blind. And, like, the poltergeist is, like, throwing things and moving things and knocking things and knocking things around. And um, crows are crows are flying through your house. Like, do you guys not close doors? Like, how are crows flying through your house? Like, what's going on? But whatever. We'll see. And maybe it is New Mexico, so you can't have, like, AC running all the time. And it's very, like eco-friendly and um cost effective to not have to open windows and stuff but like i think maybe i would just invest i would just be like yeah you know what ac about to blast it all day but whatever we'll see we'll see because continue reading let's 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 go <laughs> but yeah oh my gosh but yeah dex is like He's he's annoying me right now. And oh, and then his mustache. Like Perry says that he's he like the mustache is growing on her. But I no. No. I don't want him to have a mustache. I hope I hope that like l- later on the mustache is gone. <laughs> I just no. But I digress. Let's let's move on. <laughs> What is this? I can smell your blood? Nah. Nah. We're not doing this. I'm not having this. In my shower? No. Okay. So, something is definitely going on with Dex. Maybe he can like hear people like hear people's thoughts because they're on the bed and he's like I need you to talk to me and she's like I'm talking to you now and he's like no you're talking you wanting me to talk but your mind is racing I need you to talk to me like you want me to talk to you and then she's like well like, I don't know what to talk about. Like, I don't know what he wants me to talk to him about. And then he's like, there you go. Like, your mind's racing. And then she's like, what is he talking about? Like, how does he know? Then he like, gets up and, like, he gets in her face. And he's like, I know your deepest, darkest fear. And I'm like, what is he talking about? And, like, does he know it? And then, like, he just turns back around and, like, goes through his, like, packages, like, uh, like his luggage and stuff. I'm like, what is going on? What is this? And, like, if he, like, knows it, like, what is her deepest, like, I don't even know my deepest, darkest fear. Like, I know I have a deepest, darkest fear. I just don't, like, know it. Like, I can't visualize I can't vocalize it because I don't know it off the top of my head. Like if you give if you give me a list of like my fears, I can give you like maybe like a top ten and then maybe like a top five. But then I would have to like go through and figure out which of the top five would be like the most my deepest, darkest, but like what is going on? And then I'm trying to figure out, like, does he know that she likes him? Like, can he read her mind? This is, this is getting super crazy now. Like, what's going on? And then the eye thing, like those glowing eyes that were in the barn. And then what is Maximus 
that's the guy with the like medium guy I was talking about before. Maximus was warning Perry about Dex and why was he warning her? Like, what is going on in this story? Everything is just going crazy. What is going on? I finish this craziness. So it wasn't as like weird as the first one. It was weird. Like don't don't get me wrong. Like, there there was like some weird stuff going on, and I like a a character like that I I had like a vibe with. Like that character is gone. Like. The character's gone. Like, gone, gone. Gone. We know that they, hopefully, it was, like, it wasn't painful how they went away. But, like, that character's gone now. But, Randy, R.I.P. Where, I don't know what they did to you, but, wow. So, if you follow, like, my Goodreads, I was right, like, because I'm just like, something's going on with, like, the blind lady and Shane, Sean, whatever his name is, the ex-shaman, ex-medicine um, man, because, like, that's just, like, you seem kind of iffy, iffy, if you know what I mean. <sighs> like, how Randy went out was so horrible like I was just like come on what <sighs> anyways so um we we oh, there's nothing resolved like they gave us like some clues to like figure out like something is going on with Perry's energy she has this energy that makes her more attractive to other paranormal entities. She's like the electricity to them. Like they want to plug into her in order to make them more juiced up. That's what I'm getting from what Randy's told us. He said that there's more things going on, but they weren't ready for that. And then Randy dies. And then like we don't we don't we don't know. We, we don't know. So, like, I'm just like, what's going on? But I could have told you, like, we're on a reservation. This is ex-Navajo um, couple. We're going to be dealing with skinwalkers. <laughs> we dealt with skinwalkers. So skinwalkers can't die. You have to have a medicine person, medicine man, defeat them or get the curse or whatnot but randy was the person to do it and they killed him but a skinwalker meets the a body part of a dead medicine man or a um a energy person like perry and they will become they have more energies to do other things. And so that's what happened. Randy has his energy was used by the skinwalkers to become other shapeshifters. And skinwalkers are shapeshifters. They use their powers for mainly evil, um, to terrorize, torture, and scare. All that kind of stuff. And this is very tragic because what they were trying to do was to get her, Sarah's husband to believe in the Navajo religion again because he didn't believe in it and they went about it like the like the wrong way like wrong way completely and it was it was bad 
and horrible. I don't know. I don't know. And then uh, when she when Perry got attacked by the guys at the bar, oh excuse me, that's me. And like there's like claw marks and stuff. Like there's other shapeshifters. So like where, like what do they have to do with it? Like I there's so much stuff going on in my head, and I'm just like, what's going? There's so much. And then like the Maximus thing with him and Dex, and their their tiff they have with each other, like his grudge he has against Dex leaving the band and sleeping with his ex-girlfriend, well, his girlfriend and all that kind of stuff. I'm just like, that's, that's petty, but whatever. And I, I don't know. I, I, I kind of like Max, Maximus, but like he's giving me a little shade little pettiness with like what he's like putting in Perry's ear like you know Dex has some screws loose Dex why are you still with him you should leave him please leave him um and then giving him giving her all this stuff and like she still hasn't left and I'm just like like why would you talk about this to some girl you don't know Unless you're trying to like do something, like you have like the ult like an ultimative, alternative motive there, yeah, alternative motive. So I don't know. I'm hoping like because I did say that he's going to be coming up again because he's moving somewhere in the north, Pacific Northwest. I think that's where they are too. Um, so I'm pretty sure that he's going to come up again. But we're also like. Jennifer, Dex's girlfriend, like, I, there's so much stuff, like, just going on, and I'm just, like, <sighs> I can say why this series, like, branched out, because there's so much little nuances that are going on in the storyline that, like, you have to branch it out, because unless it's gonna be, like, super fast and you plot holes, and I don't want that, because I want to know, I want to see all the tension. I want to see the build up. I want to see everything. So yeah, this was this was good. I'm probably gonna give this like mm, maybe a three point seven five, not quite a four, but it was really good though. So yeah, I'm debating on when I'm gonna read this one, Dead Sky Morning, which is the third one. I'm gonna hold off and then I'm probably gonna finish night film. I've been reading this and, and then read some other things and then read Dead Sky Morning. But I do, I haven't read the synopsis. I don't think I'm gonna read the synopsis for any of these because I just wanna like jump into it because I know I'm gonna finish off the series. There's no point in me reading the synopsis. <laughs> no point. I just wanna figure out which book comes next <laughs> that's all so yeah red fox was good i'm glad we're continuing on tension was built nice like i said rfp rudy he's like wow how he went out was horrible but stay tuned for dead sky morning which is book three for Experiment in Terror by Karina Hawley. And I will see you in my next video, guys. <laughs> I hope you guys have a wonderful day. My name is Lady Lauren X. Ward, and bye.